Welcome to practice number 94, and today we're looking at numerical simulation of wind turbines with swept blades. So this is quite an interesting topic because wind turbines themselves, often they don't have swept blades, but they're looking into sweeping the blades uh, currently to see if you can generate more power and or more efficiency. And it's quite interesting because wind turbine blades, uh, rotoring, rotating blades and swept blades have similarities to begin with so if you have a swept wing you get a similar not exactly the same but similar boundary layer um, growth to a rotating blade which is straight you also get um, a similar effect on the geometry which is a effective reduction in the thickness of the airfoil or the blade uh, cross-sectional profile relatively speaking because of the angle that the flow goes over the blade so it's quite interesting that they're using both of these uh, items together, swept blades and wind turbines. So to look at this topic, we're going to be looking at a paper called Output Power and Wake Flow Characteristics of a Wind Turbine with Swept Blades. And you can find this in the link in the description. It's open access. And if you are just listening to this on Spotify, you can watch the video on Spotify or you can watch the video on YouTube as well. So let's get into it. So since wind power development in high-speed wind areas have become saturated, development in low wind speed areas has gradually attracted people's attention, i.e. the average wind speed range from 5 to 7 minutes per second. So that's the low wind speed. Low wind speed resources in China are mainly concentrated in the Middle East and South regions, which are close to the areas served by local by grid loads, where the consumption of industrial development and urban power is tremendous. Hence, it is of great significance to develop and fully use low speed wind energy nearby. Current wind turbines with straight blades have a low speed wind have a low wind energy utilization rate in low wind speed ranges, so they're not very good at low speeds. Inspired by the curved shape of birds, biomimetic blade designs are proposed in current research. However, research on the performance of wind turbines with swept blades mainly applies the numerical simulation method and the small number of available experimental studies provides insufficient test data to contrast the performance. Color Fala and others simulated the wind turbine power and thrust coefficients with swept blades at different tip speed ratios. So tip speed ratio is the speed at which the tip is going around to the tangential speed compared to the free stream velocity. And this can range anywhere from zero up to five, 10, 15, whatever. Um, if you have a tip speed ratio of one, it means that the tangential velocity of that tip is exactly the same as the free stream velocity. So the results show that Compared with straight blades, the power coefficient of the wind turbine with swept blades near the blade root could gain the highest of value and is raised along the and it raised along the increase of thrust. So in other words, um, if you have blades that are swept from the blade root, they saw that potentially there was an increase in thrust. Now it's not that simple because there are variabilities in terms of the thrust, in terms of the sweep, sweep and the airfoil profile, but generally speaking, they, you can get an increase in thrust. The best performance was attained when the location of the sweep start was at 25% of the rotor radius. So the first 25% of the blade was straight and then it started sweeping from there. Now I mentioned thrust just a minute ago and you might be thinking, well, what the, what, why is thrust important for wind turbines? Uh, it's important for quite a few reasons. It's very complicated actually. Whereas the power that you generate from wind turbines is very straightforward. It's just one, one very simple number. Um, the thrust affects the turbine in quite a few different ways. So first of all, the uh, increase in thrust actually is potentially damaging for a wind turbine because that means that there's more force on the turbine itself. And that increases potential bending moments, which then can break the turbine. Uh, another possibility, which is actually beneficial, is when you increase the thrust, you can actually change the um, the flow physics of the oncoming flow. You can make it more turbulent. That then potentially keeps the flow attached better over the blade, so you can push the performance of the blades higher. So, as I mentioned, the thrust um, side of wind turbines is quite complicated, but those are just two examples of how the thrust affects the wind turbine performance. They say that at the same time, this research indicated that the horizontal axis of wind turbines with forward and backwards swept blades could generate more power than other straight blades and swept blades. So horizontal axis wind turbines, they are the quintessential wind turbine. Like if you think about, you know, in your mind, if you just imagine a wind turbine, like a farm of wind turbines on a ridge somewhere, those wind turbines are horizontal axis wind turbines. The alternative is an, a vertical axis wind turbine, and that's where the shaft at which the blades are rotating about is vertical instead of horizontal. So 
Amano and other researchers studied the design of backwards swept wings, uh, backwards swept blade, <laughs> backwards swept blade, sorry, to improve blade efficiency. The design aimed to select the appropriate cross-sectional direction and size according to the oncoming wind speed. It was found that swept blades could provide better performance at lower wind speeds, while at higher wind speeds, they provided lower output power than straight blades. So that's good because they're looking at um, low wind speed um, regimes. And so if you can generate more power in this region, that's what we want. We should also mention that they mentioned here, swept forward compared to swept backwards. The difference between these two configurations are swept backwards means that the uh, tip is further downstream compared to the root. And up, if it's forward swept, it means that the tip is further upstream than the root. So they say in this study, it's mainly conducted on the aerodynamic and weight characteristics of wind turbines with swept blades and straight blades, especially in investigating the changes in wind turbines with swept blades. So the figure one shows the schematic of the blade itself. And the first part of the wind turbine blade is fairly characteristic where you have the wing root and then it sort of goes out in a fairly sharp angle. Then it sort of, sort of tapers off towards the trailing edge, or sort of towards the wing tip. And now here they say for testing, the aerodynamic characteristics of swept blades, two blade tip offsets and locations of the sweep start were designed and two sweep directions forward and backwards were used for classification respectively. So let's break this down. First of all, they have this blade. Uh, they describe it in two ways. Oh, sorry. Uh, I guess you could say three ways. The first way is the distance from the wing root at which the sweep starts, then the rest of the blade at which the sweep is occurring over, the, the length of it. So those are two different parameters. They're related very closely, but I guess you could call them different parameters. I don't know. Then you have the blade tip offset. Now, this is interesting because typically if we want to describe what the sweep of a wing is or a blade is, would give an angle, would say 10 degrees, 20 degrees, whatever. Here, they just give a blade offset uh, length. And this is completely fine because trigonometrically speaking, it's exactly the same thing. It's just that we often don't use the distance, we use the angle. But here, they give the distance. So they have the distance at which the tip strays from the straight um, blade axis. So if the greater this tip offset, the greater the sweep of the blade. So in figure two, they have all these different designs. I'm going to zoom in here so we can see them a little bit better. And they're really cool. So <laughs> they look kind of like really, really sharp teeth kind of thing. Like you have the, the regular uh, unswept blade, the straight blade, and that's a typical wind turbine blade. Then you have four which are swept backwards and four that's, which are swept forwards. Um, so they're just seeing all these different designs and they say that um, they're going to be looking at these ones experimentally and numerically. We're going to look at the numerical side first in this podcast. In the next podcast, we'll get the experimental side. So let's talk about the numerical setup here. This is quite interesting. So they used ANSYS Fluent, which is a commercial solver, and they used something called a moving reference frame method. So let's talk about this. Let's scroll down so we can see the uh, grid that they used this over. So if we have a rotating system, so it doesn't have to be just a wind turbine, it could be any rotating system, whether it's a car wheel or you know something that's just rotating around, whatever. We can use a few different um, ways of, we, we can use a few different methods to simulate this rotation. The most primitive way is called a rotating wall. And this is, uh, from my knowledge, it's definitely the, it's the earliest method that they used, like in the 80s and 90s, they were using the rotating wall. They still use it today for certain applications. And we'll talk about this briefly. Let me first talk about what it is. So the rotating wall is, let's say we have a wind turbine. And we know that the blades are rotating. So we would then just prescribe at the wall that there's a certain rotational velocity. So that's the rotating wall. Now I have to stress here that this does not mean that the actual simulation involves this turbine rotating. It's actually the blades are going to be staying stationary the entire time. We just um, sort of like trick the simulation into thinking that the blades are moving by giving this rotational velocity at the wall but it's not actually happening and there are some benefits to this in terms of um, computational simplicity it's very simple to uh, do it's like just one more calculation that we on one more equation that we add to the um, cfd solver so it's very quick and um, that's why we often have used it in the past but it's very inaccurate because um, 
you then miss out on a lot of flow physics. And so that leads us to the second method called the moving reference frame. And this, for a long time, was seen as a much better alternative and the best alternative. And what this is, with they're using this in this simulation. Well, this is now we take an entire volume. So we say the volume that this wind turbine, like the blades sweep over, we're going to take that entire volume and we're going to prescribe rotational velocities in each one of these cells. So that's a step up from the rotation, from the rotating wall method. Again, though, this has some limitations. So some benefits first are that it's quite simple and it's quite quick to um, solve, relatively speaking. But a major limitation of it is that, again, it's steady, it's stationary. So it's effectively a steady state um, rotation where uh, the blades are not actually moving. We're just saying that the cells have this velocity. So why is this bad? It's because if you think about the movement of the wind turbine, you have these blades going around. If you have three blades, let's say, you have one blade going along. This is shedding a wake of some sort. It may be a lot, it may be a little. Now you have another blade coming directly behind it. And it's going to be going, sweeping straight through this wake to some extent. And in the time that it takes for it to move, the wake has broken down a little bit, but also the blade has moved as well in this time. So that means that the geometry of this entire system is now different. If we have a moving reference frame or even a rotating wall um, uh, approach, this does not capture the movement of the blade. So this blade's position is now, when, is now at the wrong point, and it's not going to be sweeping through the wake at the same, in the same way. So this is um, a big problem for certain applications, particularly when you have um, very nuanced flow physics. You're not going to get a, a good result. But for wind turbines, this is a fairly standard approach. There are other methods that you can use. For example, a very common one is called a sliding mesh. Actually, before I mention that, I should also mention that for the moving reference frame, another um, drawback is that the um, volume has to be axisymmetric. So you can't have like a... Um, like a, a cube or something or like a, a, a pyramid shape or something it has to be a a, um, a a circular shape and then it's like a, a cylinder effectively a circular cross-sectional cylinder so that's another drawback of it if you want to have an, an asymmetric um, shape rotating around that's a potential problem so that's the mrf now moving on to sliding mesh, this is another method that we can use to simulate um, rotation. Now this also has a um, limitation that it has to be an axisymmetric shape, but um, it has the benefit, major benefit of actually rotating the geometry. So if you have a sliding mesh, you have the exact same um, volume or the exact same cells, if you like, as the MRF, but now you actually rotate these cells in time. So you actually do... Um, mimic the flow physics very closely. Um, but again, if you have an, as an asymmetric shape, then the sliding mesh starts to become very difficult to implement. And then you go to something called a chimera mesh um, or like an LBM, um, IBM, sorry, immersed boundary method. Um, these are even more complex and they are not available in all CFD solvers, whereas sliding mesh, um, MRF and rotating walls, they're pretty much available in every solver, a commercial solver at least, and in open form. Um, so those are the uh, approaches you can take to simulate a rotating object. So I've covered that here. And also they use the KMEGA SST turbulence model here for their uh, URANS uh, simulation. And I've mentioned in other podcasts that that's one of my, that's probably my favorite turbulence model um, because it's very robust. So in table three, Actually, let's mention here briefly, they calculate the power coefficient and the thrust coefficient. Let's talk about what these two things are. The first one is the power coefficient. This is effectively how efficient the wind turbine is. So the higher this coefficient is, the more, the more efficient this wind turbine is extracting energy from the free stream. So it's effectively just a measure of the amount of energy you're extracting compared to the energy available to extract the power coefficient. The thrust coefficient is also another very useful coefficient that determines how much thrust is being produced by this wind turbine. As you mentioned earlier, there is a very complex, um, there are many different um, reasons why you want to know this from the loading on the wind turbines to the uh, flow physics of the oncoming flow to um, the changing of the angle of the flow coming in because and the wake as well because of this thrust ratio or this thrust coefficient. 
So it's another parameter. And in table three, they have the different blades with their changes in the power coefficient and thrust coefficient with the different sweep angles. So they have blades one to eight and they uh, reference to the straight wing, to the straight blade, sorry. And they have differences in the power and thrust coefficients that I mentioned. And they have four swept back wings and four swept forward wings. They say that the um, increase in the tip offset ratio, increase in the tip offset um, distance reduces the power coefficient of the wind turbine as well as the thrust coefficient. So in other words, sweeping the um, tip more has a detrimental effect for the power coefficient and the um, thrust coefficient. At the radial distance, of, as the radial distance of the location of the sweep starts to become larger, the power coefficient of the wind turbine decreases. So in other words, the distance at which the um, sweep starts to start, so if it's closer to the root, the power coefficient drops. The Also, the uh, thrust coefficient also drops. So this law was similar to how the tip offset affected the aerodynamic characteristics of wind turbines. When the blades had the same swept shape, in contrast with the backwards direction, wind turbines with forward swept blades featured more perceptible improvements in the output powers. So if you actually sweep it forward now, you get better power productions. However, the lift coefficients were also higher, which needs to be paid more attention to in practical applications. So in this um, phrasing, I think what they mean is because the thrust coefficient increased when the blades were swept forward, that's a higher loading for the wind turbines. And this is something to keep in mind. So the wind turbines with straight blades were taken as the baseline. The wind turbines with the four swept blades of F2010, which has um, the swept, sweep starting at the 20% um, of from the root. And it is swept by 10%. So it's a moderately swept wing. Like this, this is actually the lowest amount of sweep that they looked at. They had another one, which is 20%, which is even higher swept. So they say for this F2010, it had the highest power and thrust coefficients, uh, which increased by 2.16% and 2.47% respectively. Meanwhile, the wind turbine designed with a backwards swept blade, so B2010, only had the power coefficient increase of 0.49% and a thrust coefficient increase of 0.38%. So in other words, the exact same sweep, but it swept backwards instead of forwards resulted in very little increase in power and, and thrust coefficients. But if you sweep it forwards, you get a 2.5% effectively increase in both of these parameters. So that's really good. Um, that shows you how the sweep direction simply affects the performance of the wind turbines. So in figure five, which we have here, I'll zoom out a little bit. Oh, we can see them all here. So that's good. With the aim, of, with the aim to study the power enhancement mechanism of the wind turbine with swift blades, the pressure coefficients of the straight blade and the swept blade F2010 at the sections of 35%, 65%, 80%, and 95% of the root radius were compared respectively as displayed in figure five. So let me just mention this. Figure uh, F2010 blades were the ones which were swept forward and they displayed the 20% increase in the power and thrust coefficients. And the these um, pressure coefficient plots are at different um positions away from the root. So you have at 35% away from the root, 65% away from the root, so 65% of the span, 80% of the span, and 95% of the span. And what these pressure coefficient uh, plots show is the pressure on these surfaces. You have the black line, which is for the straight blade. The red line is for the swept blade. And the upper line is typically for the, or it is for the pressure side of the blade. And the lower line, so the very negative line, is for the suction side of the blade. So these plots are very good because they show you the um, difference in the pressure of the pressure side compared to the suction side. And this is directly proportional to how much lift you can, can produce of any object. So they're very useful from that point of view. They also show you the maximum pressure um, on either side of the blade, which shows you how uh, potentially strong the blade needs to be. And also shows you where the lift is being produced, whether it's very close to the leading edge, where it's whether it's very close to the trailing edge. So in this particular case, X on C, when it equals zero, this is the, the leading edge. When it equals one, that's the trailing edge. And as we increase the distance away from the root, we can see that these plots change. The axes stay the same, but the, um, the extremes, the extremal, they um, reduce. So they say that 
at the blade tip section of 80% and 95% of the um, rotor radius, the peak values of the surface pressure coefficients of the swept blade were smaller than those of the straight blade. So this indicates that the blade sweep design can effectively reduce the peak value of the surface pressure at the blade tip. Now, they also say, in addition, at the tip of the swept blade, the surface pressure difference was a bit larger than that of the straight blade, which indicates a slight increase in integrated area. Therefore, the lift of the swept blade at the blade as, as the blade tip increased, and the wind turbines with swept blades could generate more power. So what they're saying here is, when sweep blade, the um, the maximum pressure difference that you see at the tip drops, but you get more of the surface having a difference in pressure. So that means that you um, have a bit more of a stable blade, I guess, but you also get more power produced. Now, why you might get more power produced, you also get more um, inefficiency. So um, this is because you're producing a lot more lift at the tip. This that means you're going to be getting more induced drag effects. You're going to be getting a stronger vortex because there's a greater difference in pressure at the wing tip. And that's where you don't want it. You want to have, be producing as much lift as possible at the wing root so that you don't have um, the opportunity for the flow to move around the wing or the blade and produces induced drag or this, this um, vortex. So on the one hand, yeah, you can get more power, um, but potentially it's not going to be as efficient. So that's something to watch out for. So then in figure six, they have a plot of the coefficients for the wind turbines with the straight blades and swept blades for um, the pressure coefficient and the thrust coefficient for different tip speed ratios. So for different um, velocities of the wind turbine effectively. They say that the above re revealed that the wind turbine with swept blades F2010, which were the good ones, had a higher output power and the aerodynamic performance was optimal when the um, tip speed ratio was five. So in other words, the tip was rotating at five times the free stream velocity. To further investigate the aerodynamic characteristics of the wind turbine with such blades, the F2010, it was necessarily it was necessary to simulate both the straight and swept blades at different tip speed ratios. And the calculation consequences are shown in figure six. So the consequences of these calculations we can see here. In the case of a wind turbine with straight blades, and the blades of F2010, the power and thrust coefficients were close when the tip speed ratios were low. However, both increased with increasing tip speed ratio. However, at high speed tip ratios, high tip speed ratios, sorry, the situation with straight and swift blades F2010 were apparently different. The power and thrust coefficients of the wind turbine with the swift blades F2010 were considerably higher than those with the straight blades. When the tip speed ratio was five, the wind turbine with swept blades F2010 had the most significant growth in power coefficients. In contrast, the increase in the thrust coefficients kept increasing with increasing um, tip speed ratio. So let's talk about this. So at low tip speed ratios, the power coefficients that both um, blades produced were very similar. And as you increase the tip speed ratio, these power coefficients increase. At a tip speed ratio of five, for some reason, the straight blade started to see a slight reduction in the power coefficient that it was producing, whereas the swept blade had a slight increase. So this resulted in the swept blade producing significantly more, significantly greater power coefficient than the straight blade. And then when you go to a high tip ratio, these then start to both reduce. So in other words, there was a point where the swept blade was producing far more a far higher power coefficient than the, st the straight blade. And they're not sure why there's no flow physics associated with this at the moment. But potentially one reason is that maybe there was some sort of stalling going on. I don't know. Or maybe there was some um, change in the effective angle of attack, which then favored the swept blade compared to the straight blade. We're not sure. So that's for the power coefficient. For the thrust coefficient, um, this is also a very similar, interesting idea a very interesting um, trend here. As the tip speed ratio increased, the thrust coefficient increased regardless, and it was fairly linearly. Uh, but as the tip speed ratio increased, the swept blade thrust coefficient increased slightly at a greater rate compared to the straight blade. And again, why that is, they don't really go into, there's no further associated with this, um, but it could be due to, I 
maybe some sort of back pressure. I'm not too sure. Maybe that there's more that's being produced at the root. I'm not really sure about this. If you have any ideas, let me know in the comments below. So that's how these um, swept forward and swept backwards wing, uh, blades affected the wind turbine performance in these numerical simulations. In the next podcast, we're going to be looking at different series experimental setups and experiments. And this goes into hot wire wake measurements, which are very different to what we're looking at now. And it'll be quite interesting. So this is from one angle, we're looking at the performance of a wind turbine. In the next podcast, we're looking at another angle. So that's this podcast. Make sure to like, subscribe. And if you have any ideas that you want us to cover in other podcasts, let us know. Otherwise, we'll continue on our regular trajectory. And if you want to get better at CFD and theory like this, check out our courses in the link in the description. And if you want to get um, your experiments better in terms of the accuracy by two to four percent, check out the MSU Hawk. It's an instrument that we make, which makes your experiments two to four percent more accurate, and it also makes your CFD validation data that much more accurate too. So, if you want to make your experiments easier and your more accurate and your CFD easier, your validation easier, more reliable, check that instrument out. Link in the description, and I'll see you in the next podcast. Peace out, amigos.